these days, it seems like everybody and their mother wants to be a CS major, and for good reason. The course of study is interesting, and the pay that you get when you graduate isn't half bad either. Now, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, and there's quite a few negatives to consider when you're considering joining a CS program, and I'm going to go over those in this video. I asked some of my followers on Twitter what their opinions were, and I'm going to combine their opinions with my own to give you a thorough overview of what you can expect to see on the dark side when you join a CS degree program. Now, I was exaggerating when I said dark side. I've had a great time majoring in CS so far, and I think the benefits of it far outweigh the harms, but it is good to know what you're getting into, and that's why I'd like to present you with some of the negatives of the degree. Let's get into it. The biggest problems you're going to face as a computer science major are going to come from other computer science majors. Besides the joke that CS majors don't shower, which I used to think was fake and not real until my first 8 a.m. CS class, it's not fake, it is totally real, CS majors really don't shower. Besides that overused joke, CS majors are elitist. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them are. They'll come into college with the hellbent goal of getting into a FANG company. They really want to get into a FANG company, and once they do that, they really want to get into a quant company. And if you don't share those same goals, and they'll let you know if you don't, they're going to look down on you. They're going to think you're not as driven or as motivated as them, even though you might just have as much motivation for different goals. And they will make sure you know that. These are also the same people that look down on humanities majors and non-STEM majors because they think they're not doing anything of value, even though changing a button from green to blue at meta really doesn't have that much value either. Those aren't the only elitists you're going to run into. You're also going to run into a bunch of people who want you to know that they're smarter than you. They will do everything they can to prove to you that they're smarter. These are people that have been coding since the age of five, and they'll tell you that within the second of meeting you. If you don't get an A on an exam or an assignment, they're going to let you know, and they're going to make you feel bad about it. Their whole self-worth comes from the idea that they are smarter than other people, and if you know if that's ever invalidated, they're going to act really badly about it. Thankfully, not all CS majors are like these two, but I can't mention elitism without mentioning sexism as well, because that also goes on a lot, as you're probably well aware. A lot of CS majors, even if they're totally nice, not elitist, you know, they'll be totally nice to other men, but as soon as another woman comes along, they will instantly think that they are less competent or less intelligent than a man who is equally as competent or intelligent. Now again, this isn't all CS majors, right? But it's enough of them that it is a problem and that I'm mentioning it in this video. Now here's the thing, right? There's a lot of bad people in CS, but there's also a lot of good people, and there's a lot more good people than there are bad people. So it should be relatively easy for you to find a community of people who are nice and kind and awesome and are supportive in your journey and not looking down on you because you're not doing everything at the same time as them or don't have the same goals as them. Find these people because there's a lot of them, and there's a lot more of them than there are elitists, and you'll have a pretty nice experience like I've had so far because I found some really awesome and amazing people. Another problem you're going to have to deal with when you're a CS major is imposter syndrome, and there's really no way around it. Imposter syndrome is just something you're going to have to learn how to live with. Now, it's going to sneak up on you, right? You're going to be talking to somebody really cool, and they're going to be talking about all the cool things they're doing, and then your brain is going to use that as ammunition against you. Your brain is going to say, why aren't you doing that? Why are they so far ahead of you? Why are they better than you? You don't deserve to be here. They're better than you. They should be doing everything, and you should be doing nothing, and you're a loser. And that's what your brain is going to say, and it's going to keep saying this for a decent amount of time until you come to realize that, you know, there's really nothing you can do besides do what you can do the best you can and do it on your own timeline. Everybody's going on their own timelines, and just because somebody got an amazing internship their first semester freshman year doesn't mean you're not going to get an amazing internship as well. It might just not be your freshman year. There are a lot of bugs on my head right now, and you can kind of visualize that as the thoughts inside your head that are saying really bad things about you when you have imposter syndrome. There's nothing you can do but sit down grind through your work and eventually you're going to prove your own brain wrong and you're going to feel really good about it. Another thing that'll help with that is finding a really cool community of people. So if you want one of those, join my Discord server. Link's in the description down below. You'll be able to talk to a lot of cool CS majors and hopefully that'll help cure your imposter syndrome. Another problem many people have with CS is just simply the workload. And this is more true for your first few semesters or really just your first semester when you're still getting adjusted to the transition from high school to college. And that's true for most majors, but particularly true for CS. You're juggling a bunch of concepts in something you've probably never really had a lot of experience before, and you're just getting a ton of work. CS professors love giving you a ton of work, and you're not only going to be taking CS classes, right? You're going to be taking your electives, your humanities credits, your math classes, whatever, and you're going to be working on that a lot. It's going to take some adjustment and some grinding, but eventually you'll get to a point where you feel comfortable with it if you have good enough time management principles. And if you want some advice on how to get good at time management, I'll leave a link to a YouTube video I made in the description down below, and you can go check that out after this video ends. But the workload is large, and especially so here at Georgia Tech, 
I have an exam almost every week. I get a lot of assignments and I have to work to get them done. Less so this semester because I'm taking slightly easier classes, but I remember last semester I was working day and night to get everything done, even with proper time management skills. So it's something you have to learn to deal with, but it's worth it in the end, or at least I hope it is. I'm only a second year, don't know, I don't know, who knows, but I think it is. And of course, the assignments aren't just it, right? You're going to be given hard exams to deal with. These exams will be difficult, they will be challenging, especially after your first semester. After you're done with those intro classes, you're going to be in harder classes, and you're going to have to deal with classes that are hard. And I'm not saying hard just in the sense that you're going to be getting a lot of work. I'm saying hard in the sense that it's going to be hard for you to understand the concepts. And again, that's something that you're only going to have to learn how to deal with. But once again, it's not all doom and gloom. If you just work hard enough, I promise you, you'll do good. Another point a lot of people like to bring up is that you're going to be spending a lot of time learning things that are not relevant for you being a good software engineer. You're going to have to spend a lot of time outside of the classroom learning the things that will make you a good software engineer. I agree with this opinion, but that doesn't mean what you're learning in your CS classes is useless. Hey everybody, Editing Sid here. I'm just going to say you should watch this video, Stanford Computer Science is Broken. It's a pretty good overview of what people talk about when they say that, you know, CS doesn't teach you everything you need to be a good software engineer. And even though I don't agree with the fact that, you know, computer science degrees should make you good software engineers, I think the point of computer science degrees to make you a good computer scientist and a lot of software engineering stuff can be learned outside of the classroom. I think that this is a good video to watch if you were more interested in that perspective. It's good to know how networking works. It's good to know how operating systems work. It's good to know how to design and analyze algorithms, but I get it, right? Not everything you're learning, not every bit of the theory is needed to be a great software engineer. And yeah, you're going to be taking classes like combinatorics and graph theory, and you probably won't need those on the job, but that doesn't mean they should be removed from the CS degree program because you can't make a degree something it's not. It's computer science, not software engineering. But it does make sense that a lot of people who want to do software engineering pick computer science as their major and to fix, you know, the lack of materials you have for becoming a good software engineer in a CS program, you're going to have to do work outside of the classroom. You're going to have to learn languages yourself. You're going to have to build side projects yourself. You're going to have to study lead code yourself. You're going to have to design your resume yourself in addition to studying for exams, doing problem sets and projects. And that sucks. You know, it's a massive workload, but the only real thing you can do is just sit down, grind, build those side projects, learn new skills, and just hope for the best. But I promise you, if you put in the effort, it'll work out. Those are all the negatives I can think of about being a CS major off the top of my head. Of course, there are more, but I didn't mention them because they're minor and don't really matter. I only mentioned the major problems. Don't let this video discourage you from being a CS major. I only made it so that you're aware of what the negatives are. The good I've experienced far outweighs the bad, but either way, it's good to know what you're getting into. Thank you so much for watching through the entire video. I hope you did. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.